Hello, this is Joseph Coleman. And I'm John Wynn. And this is Dart. So, the goal of this presentation is to show you uh, Dart. Uh, we'll show you how it works, what it's used in and for. Uh, we'll show you uh, some examples of code in Dart and where you can go if you want to learn more about Dart yourself or if you even want to start uh, learning how to program in Dart. And, uh, here, uh, next, next slide will show you a quick overview of the, of the slides to come, but uh, to achieve the goals we set out in the presentation, uh, we've basically divided up our project into several different sections that we use individually to delve deeper into, uh, into Dart. So here's a quick overview uh, of our sections. Uh, section two, we have basic features. Um, section three, we're gonna dive into the history of Dart, why it was made and uh, who, who, who made it. Section four, I'll show you a quick tutorial of uh, a demonstration of hel a Hello World program. Um, in section five, we'll go a little bit deeper and uh, we'll show you a quick sort algorithm written in Dart, and that was our selection of a medium difficulty program. Uh, section six will uh, be our evaluation of Dart uh, based on the criteria that was given to us, and in section seven, we'll share our reflections of Dart um, and our personal views on learning more about the language. So here are the uh, basic features of Dart, uh, starting with the paradigm. I have a, a quote from one of the developers. Uh, Dart is a class-based, single inheritance, pure object-oriented programming language. Uh, next, we have uh, data types, which on the next slide, I have a condensed list for you, um, but on their main website, they have a very detailed list of the data types and all of the other things um, that you'll see in the basic features uh, and we've provided a link at the end of the presentation. Uh, we'll have control flow. Uh, many of the control flow statements in Dart, uh, which you'll hear a lot in this presentation, are similar to um, or exactly alike uh, Java or C languages. Um, Sub-programs, sub uh, again Dart is very similar to Java in this aspect uh, and object orientation everything in Dart is an object everything is an instance of a class uh, Dart is a single inheritance language which means a class can inherit from or extend from only one other class so here are the data types we have optional types you have the option of adding static types to variables currently um, I say this because on the website they have noted that this will be taken out of the language uh, in the upcoming 2.0 release. But currently uh, the analyzer in Dart will infer data types when possible. We have final and const, uh, which are very similar, uh, if not exact, to C++ and Java. And they're obviously used when you want a variable to never change. And here are our built-in data types in Dart. We have numbers, int and double, which are exactly the same uh, as in uh, C and Java. Strings, here's a quote. A Dart string is a sequence of UTF-16 code units. You can use either single or double quotes to create a string. Booleans, only two Boolean objects, true and false. Uh, lists, also known as arrays, are exactly like arrays that you find in Java and C++. Maps are nearly exact to uh, hash maps in Java. They work with keys um, and other uh, elements. Uh, runes, used for expressing Unicode characters in a string. And symbols, a symbol object represents an operator or identifier declared in a Dart program. Uh, and here we have the control flow in Dart. Almost all of them uh, are can be found in languages you are probably familiar with as students. Um, 
here we have the if and else. These statements are written and work almost exactly like they do in C++. Um, in Dart, the condition must resolve to a Boolean due uh, to the way that Booleans work in Dart. Uh, they go very much in depth on this uh, in the, on the website. Um, that's pretty interesting. For loops, Dart has for loops that work very similarly to C and Java for loops, uh, like I've said several times already. Uh, here's one that I've personally never seen before, for in loops. Uh, these loops are used, and here's a quote from a developer. If you want to iterate over a collection or any iterable, and you don't care about the loop variable, you can use the for in. Uh, we have the while and do while, which are used for the same reasons you would use in C or Java languages and are written pretty much identically. And the switch, the same as the above. Uh, there are additional caveats when using switch statements in Dart, um, but they cover that more in depth on the website. So here we have the uh, core fundamentals of Dart. And this is basically from the actual front page of the website. So uh, the core goals of the developers, uh, which we'll get to in the history, um, were actually, they, they wanted to design a programming language that was uh, long-term and very stable and able to give their employees and make their employees uh, productive with their programming language. So. They, they basically created this um, programming language, Dart, um, to become this batteries included. That means that it has uh, its libraries and tools. And in comparison to something like um, JavaScript, uh, it actually has a lot more data libraries to use from than JavaScript, which is quite handy, especially since it has, it comes with libraries and tools. Uh, so with JavaScript, you actually have to implement those in. So it, it, it has this batteries included, and it also has this really elegant, uh, somewhat simplistic style of um, syntax. And, and the programming language of Dart is actually quite nice. Uh, you can handle these uh, web development problems a bit easier, and also errors are easier to catch. Uh, that's why they have async, await, generators, uh, string interpolation, and uh, earlier error detection. Um, also, in comparison to uh, JavaScript, uh, they don't have the, this nasty sort of uh, automatic type coercion that JavaScript has, uh, as well as globals. Um, it, it sort of eliminates this um, ambiguity um, in comparison and helps with this... Uh, to help uh, sort of get the, these Google developers that it, Dart, Dart was designed for to sort of help familiarize themselves with this new language and also work with the language uh, over a long period of time to, to continue working with it instead of going back to JavaScript. Um, and the Dart developers also have said that it's sort of boring, but... They prefer it to be more productive and stable in comparison to JavaScript. So here we have the example code. Um, really, we sort of pulled this. This is, a, this is also sort of on the front page of the site. And all this code does is it calculates pi. And automatic. And already, we, are, we see some of the methods that it provides, as well as some of its data libraries. Um, we have the main method, similar to C style syntax. We also have the, the sort of print um, line here, uh, print compute pi using the Monte Carlo method. And we have our methods here. We have our data types, uh, the var and varchar, similar to, again, uh, JavaScript. Um, we have another print, and here we have async. Um, really, Dart is a really nice programming language. It's easy, easy to learn, deployable, and works really well um, in tandem with uh, JavaScript. You can trans com com compile the Dart's code into JavaScript, which is really handy.
So the history of Dart uh, is actually quite recent. It was unveiled um, in Denmark on October 2011. So. And the founders were Lars Back and Casper Lund, both of which are uh, employees at Google. So basically what this means is this is a very uh, recent and kind of re really recent uh, programming language. So not much work has been done on it uh, yet, but they like they pretty much are going to see a lot of development over time. And sort of test it and see if Dart is um, truly worthy to use over something like JavaScript. Um, but it, it was standardized by the TC52, uh, which is a technical committee committee formed by Ekman International, and basically they approved the Dart language um, first edition in July 2014. Um, and since then, it's been improving over time, becoming more familiarized with other programmers, namely um, Google. And it's in since then they've been able to compile, I mean, transcompile their um, programming language to JavaScript. Um, so that's very effective in a modern browser where you can work with both both uh, HTML and CSS. And instead of JavaScript, you use Dart. Or if you want, you can uh, interchange those and use JavaScript. Um, and then it proceeded to acquire its second standardized edition within uh, December 2014. So why was Dart created exactly? Dart was created uh, mainly to tackle uh, large uh, projects, mainly these really huge web applications. And Dart is really nice because it alleviates many of the problems that uh, JavaScript has. Actually, uh, JavaScript is a bit it can be a bit more a bit uh, confusing than uh, other languages. It's not very uh, user friendly, and we'll see some examples later on in the slides. But um, uh, Dart uses null rather than null and undefined comparatively to JavaScript. And this can lead to ambiguity and cause some headaches. Uh, Dart initializes arrays differently than JavaScript. And, and we'll also see examples of that. Um, uh, Dart programs also run fast because the same people who developed uh, Chrome V8 are also the same people who developed uh, Dart. Uh, Dart was overall strictly designed to help Google employees sort of latch on to a programming language that can also tackle um, web development app applications and uh, become more familiar with Dart over something in JavaScript, which they might have troubles with. So it helps with user-friendly uh, problems. So here we have an example of uh, JavaScript and uh, really just the initialization of arrays. Uh, Dart actually uses lists, which are basically arrays. Um, so in, in JavaScript, here we're initializing two different arrays. In array A1, we're initializing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, five elements within the first array. And the second array initializes um, basically a, an array of five elements, but sort of space for five elements. So the main difference is here uh, in JavaScript, we're um, sort of allotting space for five elements by using undefined. So this is kind of confusing and it has a slight lack of elegance comparatively to Dart. Dart is a lot easier to understand. Dart, um, in, instead of using undefined, it actually just uh, allots the space for the five elements. And on top of that, it kind of works like a vector where we can start removing, where we can use the functions within Dart like remove range or um, other support uh, functions for sorting. So in the next slide, I'm gonna demonstrate uh, how Dart code is written using a very, very simple Hello World program. Um, and just as a side note, uh, for this tutorial, I'll be using uh, a really nice tool that the Dart developers 
uh, have created and put on their website, and it's called DartPad. Um, and, 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 and this tool is really great for getting used to and quickly learning how to write um, in the Dart language. So I'm going to back out here and open up DartPad. And here I have just a really simple Hello World program written. Uh, so you have your main function and you have your print statement and we'll click run and there it, there it appears uh, on the console. So it's, it's really simple, um, you know, three lines of code to, to write a hello world. It's really nice. Um, and here's just a, a, a close up of what that, what that looks like. Um, it's a really, really simplistic programming language and it uses a very, uh, a, a syntax style very similar to uh, C. Um, and as John said before, and uh, it can now be transcompiled into JavaScript, which makes it uh, much more appealing to people uh, who have to use JavaScript on a daily basis or whatnot. So here we have the medium program for Java or for Dart. Uh, we basically used a quick sort algorithm and tested it out on a large array of elements. It's similar to C style, so users still utilize pivots and loop through the sequence of events from left to right uh, based on the pivot that they are given. Um, the main difference between this and uh, language and other C-style languages is the algorithm is cleaner in defining loops and also usual, utilizes arrays uh, differently and safer. So here we have our medium program. Uh, we start out with the quick sort function. It utilizes uh, the list or the array and chooses a random element from that array. Then we initialize our pivot, our less and more arrays, and the pivot list as sublist. And then we divide these arrays into partitions, uh, one of them being the less and one of them being um, uh, more than the pivot. And basically we make these into sublist. Then we utilize this recursive uh, functions, sort of uh, uh, we, we call the less uh, partition and then we call the more partition um, as it sort of sorts itself out, basically, based on the, the pivot that you're given. So how it works is uh, we, we're sort of sorting the elements that are lesser than the pivot and more uh, than the pivot itself. Then we concatenate our results and put them to a sorted list based on the sublist. And here in the main, we have our list that we're given to sort out. So, so we have before sort and then after sort. And then here we have the unsorted list as before. And then here we have the after sorted list. And so here is our evaluation of Dart. Um, under readability, um, with simplicity and orthogonality, um, because of the many overlaps uh, that you find in Dart uh, from C and Java, I would say this is a very easy language to read uh, and understand. Um, and it is especially familiar uh, to students like us that have taken C++ and Java. Um, and as you can see from the uh, Hello World program, I mean, it's just really, really easy to read. So for writability, we have support for abstraction. Dart provides a pretty decent means of abstraction as seen in the medium program for the quick sort algorithm. Uh, programmers can utilize um, a really safe array, assign a pivot, and then the programming uses the less and more sublist to sort the list of elements from the original pivot itself. So it's, it's relatively safe, it's easy, um, and as for expressive, expressivity, in Dart, it's it's quite clean. In comparison to something like JavaScript, it only takes one line of code to make a Hello World program in comparison to JavaScript, which takes uh, roughly about 15, basically more. Uh, and under reliability, we have type checking. Um, as you could see in the Dart pad, type checking occurs while, uh, the, unis while the user finishes a line of code. Uh, therefore, it is uh, very inexpensive because the user is notified ahead of time before execution occurs. Uh, Dart score is high here when using the Dart pad. Um, and with it exception handling, I have another quote from a developer. Dart uses exceptions when an error or an other exceptional 
event occurs inside your program. In contrast to Java, Dart exceptions are unchecked. So for the reflection, I thought that Dart was overall a great substitute for JavaScript in terms of web development. It comes with uh, the batteries included package, like I've said. Um, it's sleek, elegant. Um, it, it's quite easy to become familiar with this language over time. It uses objects and functions cleaner. Uh, my main issue is that it doesn't have a garbage collector in comparison to like uh, Java or JavaScript. So you may have to dynamically allocate data as well as delete it during the runtime. So since this is mostly designed to help develop web applications, this isn't too much of an issue, but I'm sure they would resolve this later. In general, um, much is yet to be learned of Dart. So I would like to see more developers start to work with this in the future to help uh, really everyone familiarize themselves with it and really just to help um, sort of make more web applications and whatnot to help further simpli to help further learn this new uh, language for web development. And for my reflection, um, I, I thought Dart was a really, uh, really clean and relatively simple language to like to write. Uh, I've really enjoyed seeing all the overlap. Uh, which made it way more simple for me to understand and get into writing. Um, the one difficult thing is not having, since Dart is still such a new language, it, there's not much information uh, on the internet yet uh, for people looking to start, uh, put Dart on their computer and start writing code immediately. It's just, it's very... Um, there's not much information out there yet, uh, outside of the Dart website at least. And with the with that issue in mind, uh, I'm sure this is likely due to the fact that uh, I mean Dart's stable release first stable release was only five months ago, um, so more information should be coming out in the next years. Uh, I'm really excited to learn more about Dart, and uh, the Dart 2.0, like I said, should be coming out early next year. And here is a list of our sources. Thank you so much for watching and listening. Thank you. And this has been a really fun project. Thank you.